Got to get myself in front of the camera there. Hey, welcome back to the Mortgage Athlete Podcast. It's been a few weeks since Tom and I got in front of the camera, but we have a special guest today, Dan Quiggle with America's Choice Title, and he's also the CEO of PEO Alley. If I Ally, yeah. Ally. If I pronounce I knew I'm going to pronounce that wrong. But we're going to learn a little bit about that and the things that he's dabbling in and, and talk about a little bit about what's going on in the real estate industry. Yep. Um, and uh, I'm going to welcome my co-host, Tom Reber. Glad to be here, Tracy. Here we are, Mortgage Athlete Podcast. We have a legend today. Dan Quiggle and I met back in 2009, and it was absolute combustion the day we met. Uh, I'll never forget it. It was so amazing because when he sat down in front of me, I said, I've got a bigger plan for you, and I can't wait to share it with you. And he took a left, he took a right, he took a left, and he took a right. Now he's a world-renowned speaker. He travels all over the world. He talks to CEOs. He talks to people of relevance and is a game changer. And it all started right here at Ponte Vedra Beach at America's Choice Title, which you still own today, which is incredible. Yeah, and, you know, I'm, I'm so fortunate to have that company. I, I, you know, it's all about people, right? Yeah. So I feel great only because I have great people surrounding me on a regular basis. Christine Maselli, who's the president yeah. of that company, has been with me from the She's beginning. Based. She's the real brains of the operation. And, uh, you know, she runs a tight ship, and she's good at what she does, and she actually loves it, and that makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, no doubt. She is really, really good. She takes care of the business with the buyers and the sellers coming together for closing the final dating wall, get the keys, enjoy the moment. But you know, you know what she, she you're right. She cares. Um, she is, she's also a business leader. Like she she, you know, invests in the people around her. She cares about these uh, clients, and she wants to get it closed. And right. you know, these days, I mean, all kinds of landmines can exist. And sure. having somebody with her background, you know, I think she started in title, you know, when she was like 18 years old. And uh, she's older than that now. I'm not going to give that up number, but it's been, it's, it's been a while. And uh, I don't think she'd, she'd want me to do that. But, no, she, you know, she's just a, re a resource. I, mm. I always tell the story. Our Fidelity, our underwriter, one day, they had about five attorneys on the call, on a call, and they called her one day, and they said, um, we've got this issue. What, what's the answer? And Christine's like, it's this because of this. And they're like, we knew it. You know, I mean, yeah. so she's that kind of resource where yeah. you have top experts calling her for her opinion, and it just makes a difference. I want I want to just you bring it up because I'm listening I'm listening to a book right now called Marine Maxims. It's written by uh, I'm a '92 graduate of the Citadel. It's written by '91. He's a retired colonel. He's now the commandant of cadets at the Citadel. And in, in just all that you just said, no, it's like yeah. But the leader, she, you, she's great. But you've given her the leash mm -hmm. as a leader. You haven't. You probably haven't micromanaged her, and probably have given her all the resources that she needs. So she comes into work excited. Yeah. That she's a decision maker and an, and an impactful person in the organization. So first of all, you are so smart to recognize that, right? I mean, true true power, and I'm not talking about like a sick, demented power. I'm talking about the power to inspire others, mm -hmm. to like lead others. Mm -hmm. Starts by giving people a chance to have autonomy. Yeah, like give them a chance to win, to give yes. them a chance to fail. Like allow them to be the best version of themselves. Mm -hmm. I think when we micromanage, we just we're slowing people down. And right. and uh, you know, I always say, I, I heard this one. I speak to a lot of CEOs, and I heard this one CEO go, "Oh, you know, our, our sales manager left. Now I, I I get to do sales again. Like it's a great." And I'm like, "Look, if you're doing sales, like who's leading the company? Who's the visionary leader right. that's creating? You know, the reason why people want to come to that business each day. Mm -hmm. I think you have to delegate. You have to trust people, and you have to empower them. And when you empower them, great things can happen. Well, going back to the the Marine Maxon's book, the, what, the one thing he says, he's, he's talking obviously about Marines, is they don't volunteer to be Marines to be substandard. They're volunteering to be Marines because they, yes. the, the, yeah, the customs, the, yeah, the best of the best, that they have this elite level that they're, now, do all of them make it? Some of them, get, you know, get bad attitudes and they got to, he talks about how he's got to manage some of those out, but they, people join the company with an attitude that they want to make a difference. Striving for excellence every day. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of like, I, I have a say, I'm like, just when you think you're the smartest one in the room, <laughs> look in a different room. Mm -hmm. yes. Find somebody <laughs> better, smarter, hungrier. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. how I found Christine, yep. right? Yeah. You know, and, and really our whole staff. You know, I mean, we're just so fortunate to have such great people. You have a great staff. Um, to kick us off with a little bit more, you know, real estate as we dig into to what you're doing, because there's, there's multiple things, but from what you're hearing from them, because you're not there in the day-to-day -day operations, obviously, what are some of the challenges uh, as, you know, the title companies are seeing as worse Tom and I are seeing, uh, you know, front end with insurance, obviously, you know, uh, inventory's down, rates are up. So, and obviously we got an election year that's got everybody 
it's like, you know, maybe I need to wait a few more months. Yeah. You know, what are you guys seeing over at America's Choice? Well, I think you saw, you know, first of all, the refis went away, right? So right. that takes a chunk of your business down. Mm -hmm. Then there's low inventory because why would somebody leave a 3% mortgage exactly. to go to a 7%? And, and then you have these high interest rates. However, I do think there's opportunity out there. And, and I think that you're seeing a possibility, you know, some, some owners are, are literally, sellers are literally buying down rates, giving people better pricing. So there's, there's always ways around things and people are always going to be moving. I think for, uh, you know, for a realtor, and, and, and I'm getting this from them because I'm mm. talking to a lot of realtors, right. you know, they're, they're feeling like they really need to kind of show their value. But here's the reality. These are like, realtors are like the epitome of the true entrepreneur in America. Yes. They are 100% commission-based. They don't get paid anything right. unless that thing closes. And by the way, they could spend two years with somebody showing properties, and that person at the last minute could go, go use somebody else. Yeah. So they are taking risk every single yeah. day. Mm -hmm. And so mm, I view our role at America's Choice Title Company as one to make sure that when we have the opportunity to work with somebody, number one, we make sure this thing closes and closes as quickly that we anticipate any problems that can arise and that's where my you know season team comes in and and then and then finally that we save them some money from our side so we at america's choice use a butler rebate mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't even talk about it they don't even know about it uh there was a law a law uh, case where a name a man named butler sued against rest but he said i know you can't give a kickback but i should be able to get a discount mm -hmm. i'm the one paying for title and he won the case so we at America's Choice Title use the Butler rebate and give the realtor full credit for it. So let me give you an example. You know, this realtor calls us, says you're going to be doing the closing. I make the call to the client and say, you know, Mrs. Jones, so-and-so called me. They said we're going to be doing the closing. They said to take very good care of you. <laughs> they also asked if we discount your, your file based on her, her request or his request. Mm -hmm. We're going to save you another $500. You see that on the HUD. Right. In a time when it matters the value you bring, I want to be part of that value. And, and I'm a karma person. Like, I believe you do the right thing. It's going to come back to you tenfold anyway. So why Absolutely. not? Right. We're one of Fidelity's highest volume agents because we discount title. So if you match the discount with the service, with the experience, you know, we just want to be a powerhouse and we want to be a, a great partner. How about that, Coach? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Well, you know, I, was, I, I finished up with Kerry Hustis this morning on, yep. the, on the Real Estate Access podcast. And to you know, talk about the real estate agents just like housing is such a big part of our GDP, you know, of all the things that's involved in housing and from d digging the dirt to making the washing machines and yep. everything else. The real estate agent is the resource in the community. And I think NAR, Florida Realtor, uh, NIFAR here locally needs to put that out in the forefront and get behind this campaign that I think they need to put forward that I've been putting forward for yep. three years. Yep. So yeah. Saying that. No, listen, listen, <laughs> listen yeah. anyone in the industry knows how hard these people are working yeah. and they're, they're, they're on 24 seven. This, yeah. th this is no like, you know, I'm off on weekends or I'm off on evenings. They're getting called 24 yep. seven and, 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 and they care. They, this is the part of the American dream That's right. and we have to protect this. We have to save it, but we also have to uh, show our value and show our value proposition. And that should be easy mm. because, they're working, you know, hardworking, great Americans. Mm -hmm. I agree, hundred percent. I, I think Dan, you touched a lot of great points there. I think ultimately, when you look at uh, earning your fee for service, providing a great value of information, knowledge, and experience, when you bundle that together, you can hold your head high and say, "I have mm -hmm. the influence and value needed to make this transaction sparkle mm -hmm. and deliver." And I think you do that, at America's Choice Title. I think our real estate professionals. Um, are amazing at what they do. Um, and then you throw in the mortgage athlete that really does their part in bringing the financing. It's a total collaboration. For the first time in my many 33 years, you have a collaborative effort all the way around. And if you're not hitting all those pieces early, you're going to be behind. Well, one of the fun things I've had uh, been able to do lately is, you know, I, I speak for a living now, uh, pretty much full time. I speak about 45, 50 times a year mm -hmm. um, all around the world on leadership, emotional intelligence. And so I've actually, with a lot of the clients at America's Choice, been able to also partner with them and, and be kind of a leadership coach from that perspective. I've really enjoyed that, getting to be part of other people's leadership journey and help yeah. them build their businesses. And uh, that, that's probably one of the most exciting things I, I'm getting to do these days. Um, you mentioned pre-show your interactions with um, President Reagan. How did that lead you? I mean, was that, did you, were you, in, obviously he inspired a lot of people. Did that inspire you to get out and speak as well? Is that, was some of the, some of his Reaganisms in you? Oh yeah, well, yeah, listen, come on. Uh, so <laughs> when, when, when I was, at, first of all, you give me too much credit. I would never even put myself on the same level as Ronald Reagan. However, <laughs> I, I, I mean, you're, you're, we're talking, this guy literally 
I looked up to Ronald Reagan when I was younger. I grew yeah. up in the Reagan years. I was taught anything was possible for anyone. That's the way I was brought up. Yeah. So I truly believe that. Like, I thought anyone could start. And I grew up super poor. So, like, this is all gravy on top for me anyway. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I, I always joke around. I would say, if something ever happens to me tomorrow, there better be a margarita machine at my funeral. Like, they better be celebrating every day. Because, you know, yes. I'm very appreciative. But I will, I will say that what I saw in Reagan was attitude of gratitude, mm. humility, humor, yes. loyalty. Like, it, those were the principles that I saw him on a daily, forget politics. Mm-hmm. Literally, look, just look at the emotional intelligence side. This guy connected with people. He, he, You could disagree with that guy on 10 things. He'd find 11th, say, let's talk about it. Today in <laughs> politics, we could agree on 10 things. If we disagree on the 11th, I hate you and don't want to talk to you. Yeah. Right. To me, that's not leadership. And now, at any point, I want to make this clear. I'm not saying sacrifice your principles. But put the burden on the leader to market the message. Yeah. Just like us in the industry. Like, put the burden on us to market our value. Yeah. Like, let's go do it. We have the information, so articulate it, market it, mm-hmm. you know, talk about it. But Reagan was, you know, just such a great force in my life because I, I, I saw that real leadership is not about demanding or demeaning or demoralizing. It's about inspiring and motivating and appreciating. And I think when you do those things, and, it, and it's real, it has to be real, you know, great things start to happen. I think a lot of people underestimate, I think we could talk about Reagan all day, but uh, but the fa- how, was it GE that he worked for and went around all, all around right, the country? Yeah, yeah. And his experience of uh, learning about the country and learning about the people everywhere throughout the country yeah. is part of that, what you just, the sauce that you were just talking about. But, and again, you know, look, I was talking about Christine Maselli, the pr- president of America's Choice title. Right. Um, he cared about people. And when you care about people and you want a good result for everyone around you, you work hard for that. And mm-hmm. and again, I think it, it's it's the karma thing. It just comes back to you mm-hmm. tenfold. And if it doesn't, who cares? You did the right thing in the first place. Right. That's right. And and I th- I think all those things matter. You know, one of the one of the neatest things that I get to do is is travel and speak these days. And I get to do. I was up in Jersey speaking for Jersey Mike Subs. I was oh. just in Malaysia. I was just in Europe. Um, and and you start to see patterns like real leaders are visionary leaders. They create such a vision for people so compelling that these people go to bed dreaming about it, wake up foaming at the mouth about it, fantasize about it. They want to be part of it because you're the leader. Mm. It can be for anything. It could Mm. be for a widget. It could be a, a, a service, a product, whatever it is. But how do you get people to follow you, you know, into battle, into the world, mm. and fight for something that they believe in? Right. And and I think that's that's what real leadership is. It's 100%. about create. It's it being a visionary leader, standing for principles, mm. fighting for the people around you, and looking to expand leadership and build leaders along the way. I think we, I, you know, with my contact with Colonel Gordon and his book, and, and we should have a little leadership summit. <laughs> right. Just, our own I'm little just Jacksonville. Explosion. I mean, Dan Quiggle's actions. His reputation is amazing. Yes. When you take this and put this in front of the right people, when I met him in 2009, I literally about jumped across the table and shook him and said, this is why you're going to be the man. You just do that. Look. All right. Can, look where he is can, I t- can I tell the story? Tell the story. Tell <laughs> the story. So, so, <laughs> all right. So I have to give credit where credit is due because sitting next to me is a guy who, when I say like life changing, literally changed my life. This is the guy I talk about all the time. And here's why. I... I went to college. I thought I was an athlete. I thought I was going to school on an athletic scholarship. But I ended up going to college on a debate scholarship. And uh, so I would speak within my industries. I've had five different companies. I would speak within the industries. But so I was speaking at a conference, and Tom heard me speak. And he comes back. He's like, Dan, you should be a Vistage speaker. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. Here's my card. Well, they (laughs) called me. (laughs) Well, now I've done 437 Vistage events worldwide. Wow. I've spoken for EO, YPO, all these major companies. That's all because of this man right here. And I, I give credit. I just look back on that moment because, yes, I was having a good time, but really what you did, Tom, for me was life-changing for me, my family. So I, I can't even thank you enough. I'm, I'm serious. It's, it's wow. Just, it's Testimonial right here. No, but, right. It, but, it, but, but again, right? But, but, you know, those people who know Tom Reber know that he wears his heart on his sleeve, that he's going to tell it to you just how it is, that he's, you know, his only problem is he lacks energy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But, but, you know, he, 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 again, you know, this is going to be, I guess, the common theme, right? <clears throat> when you care, yep. when you invest in others, yep. Yep. great things happen. That's right. And so for, for their life, it comes back to you. Yeah. You know, like it's just it's, it, it's, it's a, a good feeling. When you go to these different events, what are some of the, the, the questions? I imagine 
you know, again, again, reading this because this book is on my mind because I'm listening to it every day yes, going yes. back and forth to work. The ch- some of the questions that you get off stage, you know, uh, some guys are looking for the secret sauce of uh, in, in which is what you're just you're talking about to yeah. invest in your people and give them the the power to make decisions and so forth. But some of them are just reluctant to do it. It's just something just just, just can't let it go. Well, in, in a second, we should talk about flow, uh, yeah. the, the, the neuroscience behind yeah. flow state, because that's what I'm speaking on yeah. a lot these days uh, with mm-hmm. the Flow Research Collective. But I will tell you, so I get asked a couple different questions. So one is, and this is fascinating to me, okay? Mm-hmm. So I try to be a, a positive person, you know what I mean? I try to be happy in, in general in life, and uh, but, you know, we all deal with issues. Like, we all have challenges. Yep. But when I finish speaking sometimes, the most asked question of me, which is fascinating, is they say, Dan, you seem happy. There has to be a chink in the armor. <laughs> <laughs> to which I'm fascinated by this question because I'm like, why do you want that so bad? Why do you need other people's misery so badly? You know, to do so then right. I say, of course. I mean, I lost both my parents. I called my mom every day in my life. Like I still mm. want to pick up the phone 15 years later and call her. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like mm-hmm. so, you know, you have issues with business. You have, but you have to make a decision as a leader. Are you going to let those things define and defeat you or empower and strengthen you? Yes, sir. Like, are you going to let those things ruin your day? Because we don't get back this morning, this afternoon, Mm -hmm. gone. I only have this time right now. Yes. And when you let other people affect your emotions, you give them what? Power. Power. I refuse to give that power to people. Mm -hmm. To take down my day, to take down this one chance I have to be happy, to to live a life that I want to live. I mean, I just refuse to let it happen. The other thing, the... The, the most impactful moment of my three-hour presentation that I do when, when I speak for Vistage in some of these groups, out of the whole thing, is probably about 10 minutes long. And I put up on the screen a slide, and it says work-life balance. And you know what I say? Welcome to the biggest lie perpetrated on human beings. Yes. Because that doesn't exist. Nope. Because number one, we have to work. And number two, we sleep. And so some people get home at 6.30 and their kids go to bed at 8.30. That's two hours. You're always behind the eight ball. Yep. Yep. So I said, so I switched years ago to something that saved me, and I just asked you to consider it, and they like, lean back in their chairs, you know, a couple hundred CEOs, mm-hmm. and, and I go, I switched from this, you know, work-life presence to this, and I put work-life, ba- or I'm sorry, work-life balance to work-life presence. I want to be where I am, mm-hmm. and I want to be there fully. Yes. So if they have even one hour, yep. I want phone down, turned off. Mm. I want to be in connection. I want to have conversations where I listen and I respond. And then I say this, this is the, this is the part I go, so I'm going to ask you a question, all of you. It's going to sting a little bit because all of you can know the answer the second I say it, but mm. here goes. Who gets the worst of us? The absolute worst mm. of us. And they all sit back in the chair. Mm. They get this look on their face oh, and they yeah. go, family. And I go, no, specifically. And they go, spouse. Yes. And I go, so if that's, if that's not the case, congratulations. Because that's not normal. But if it is the case, here's the good news. It ends today. The reign of terror is over. Stop. And they just, <laughs> la- you know, they nervously <laughs> laugh, but you right. know what's really yeah. going on. Yeah. And, and what's neat is I get hundreds and hundreds of emails, messages. I know it's, it's really exciting saying, I don't know who you are or what you really said in that meeting, but on behalf of my family, thank yeah. you. You know, because it... We have this limited time with the people that yeah. we care about. No mm-hmm. We have a legacy that we can that we can you know build that we can create, and so how are you building your legacy? Mm. You know, I love it. What are you going to uh, do with your dash with the yeah. closest people? Yeah, it's true. How do you, I mean? Just the first thing that went through my mind is you're going at all these speaking engagements, roughly one a week. Yeah, you're flying all over the. Yeah. How are you, how are you? Balancing. I mean, how does you, how does your family handle it? In fact, your wife knows you. You're, well, you know, you're away. I assume you have kids. Well, I have I have the smartest wife in the world because she only picks the cities that she wants to. Catch. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, there so it is. She's, 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 choice. she's busy with the kids for Cleveland and Des Moines, right. <laughs> wide open for the Maldives, Hawaii, and Tahiti. There you, know you go. There so you go. so <laughs> I, I give her credit. So I view every one of these. I'm um, just being candid as a vacation yeah. opportunity. Hundred um, percent. The kids go on a lot of trips to us. So again, they ch- choose cities i'm probably the only dad that travels all the time that kids think i'm home all the time because when i'm home i'm kind of home mm-hmm. you know what i mean i'm there so again probably have the only family that's like you should go speak like yeah. you're here all the time <laughs> so, so sorry of you today so <laughs> so I, w- I will say that um you know it's but look it's never easy and it's yeah. never it's never perfect right there is yeah. no perfect but uh, there's a saying don't make the perfect the enemy of the good there's still a lot of good out there and so it's what you do with those good times it's what you do you know are you present when you do have the time that you were with them you know how do you treat people and again you know there's there's no saint sitting here but i will tell you that you know you want to try to be the ne- the best version of yourself i can say this this kids are special 
number one. They, they're, they're game changers. And he's he and his wife have elevated and supported and given them foundational lifts. So they're phenomenal. I mean, you got some great legacy there. I, I will I, I will give her, her uh, you know, my wife credit for that. I mean, she, she's a great mom, and yeah. she's – She's she's always you know been there for them and you know we both try to be of course yeah. but um but yeah all three kids doing great I and mean, they're all doing their their thing my older son's a pilot and ocean rescue lifeguard my my younger son's playing water polo at UC Santa Barbara yeah. right now but, and, and then kind of cool my daughter's uh, on, uh, the, I, I, on the pro uh, tour hold on a second. let's take a picture of UC Santa Barbara water polo yeah yeah first of all he's six five <laughs> and he's just <laughs> he's just veed up you know I, he came home the other day yeah. I spent <clears> two <throat> weeks in a headlock. Like, he would just come in like he loved me <laughs> and then wrap me up. And I'm like, why do you have to show me your dominance? Like, you know, I have to tap out each time, you know. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. just so strong. And then kind of cool, my, my daughter plays professional beach volleyball, and yes. she's on the U.S. Olympic team. So wow. she, I'm so sorry. Oh, All three look. high achievers. Hey, I mean, listen, but you know what? Here's the neatest part about that. They're doing what they love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that's I, I think that's my point. I posted something the other day. I said, find your passion, yeah. master it. And there will be enough crazy people on this planet to pay you to be the master of anything. Chess, snowboarding, yeah. beach volleyball, you know, mortgage, yeah. title. I, I'm, I'm looking for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we found it. It's male supermodel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. I mean, it's male supermodel. There it is. Oh, I like on. the call. Yeah. Um, well, l- let's, let's dab a little. You're the PEO ally. ally. Yes. yes. That's what branched you off in that? What, yeah, so, so so what's fun about that, and thanks for bringing it up. Um, mm-hmm. So I have a friend, Ted Frank, yep. who's the number one sales guy for, and I don't even want to say sales guy. He's just he's just the number one um, representative for paychecks, payroll, business solutions. So when you need payroll, insurance, HR services, they bundle that, and it's called PEO services. Well, Ted and I, I, I don't, I rarely recommend people. I just don't, because, you know, it's hard. You know, yeah. you, know mm-hmm. you can recommend good people. You know, there's there's good people you can recommend. Right. But it's just hard, because sometimes people let you down. But I've had a good record with Ted. I've worked with him for almost 25 years with my own companies. And so, you know, for people out there who need paychecks or payroll services, P, you know, PEO services, he's a great resource. And so I partner with Ted, and, um, you know, I help direct people toward, toward him and toward paychecks. And he usually saves them about 10 to 25%. And the best part about that is when you when you deal with Ted's team, you you don't call an eight hundred number at paychecks. You call Ted and you call his team. So it's like having okay. a private client group for your uh, company. Right. And most business owners, if you have like five to five hundred employees, that's kind of the sweet spot. You don't want to be doing that anyway. No. Like I don't want to do that. I don't. I can't stay compliant all the time. I don't have time, and I don't want. It's not my passion. Mm-hmm. Like I want time to follow my passion, which is building the business I want to start, mm-hmm. not deal with all the paperwork and all the all the laws and stay current and everything else. Right. So PEO Ally helps direct PEO Ally dot com. We help, we help direct people um, toward a path of happiness. We it's I think we even say like smile more, worry less is our tagline. <laughs> you know I mean? Like stay focused on what you love, your passion. Wow. Well, I mean, there's not because small business owners can get taken away from their passion. That's why they started yeah. their business. Yeah. They're passionate about that particular thing. And now they got HR. Now they got payroll. Yep. And insurance, the, costs. insurance costs. And oh, you know, okay. the neat thing about what Paychex does and what Ted's team does is you take a company of like 15, 20 employees, you get rates like you have 500,000 employees for insurance because they wow. bundle it together. And and even even the, the, the compliance part of it and the the legality of it, y- you want to minimize your, your risk. Mm-hmm. So w- when we have to let somebody go, and you never want to do that, but when we do, we go to paychecks first. They tell us how to do it, and then if, if we do it that way, we're covered. They, they, they fight for us. They protect wow. us. Right. So there's there's all kinds of different reasons why you would want to use uh, PEO services. But Ted's my good friend, and he's number one out of like 4,000 people you know, selling for that company. And right. and you don't get there by not giving great service and yeah. and you know, kind of being on the side of the, of the business owner. Yep. Wow. I, I, again, who knew? Don't judge book by its cover. Get to chapter three, four, five, six, seven. I yes, just witness and respect 100% what you've done, where you're going, and you're still just getting started. Yeah, no, it's, it's, so, it's so exciting. The whole flow stuff is amazing. So I've been speaking for the Flow Research Collective. Yeah. Um, I was just up in uh, Boston speaking for Bob's Discount Furniture, you know, $2 billion yeah. company. It is fascinating, everybody. You can biohack your brain to be 500% more efficient. Like literally biohack your brain to, to actually get in the flow state. And what's neat is I, I, I guarantee you, like your listeners have been in flow you, while you're reading, yeah. while you're hiking, while you're playing a sport, maybe playing an instrument yeah. on a bicycle. 
like it's the zone or that mm. runner's high, mm. but your prefrontal cortex slows down. You're not second guessing yourself. Uh, the, the phenomenology behind it is like timelessness, selflessness, mm. richness, right? Uh, your, your brain, if you could see it, is lighting up and you're releasing serotonin, you know, your dopamine, uh, you know, endorphins, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, anandamide. And that stays in your brain for, are you ready? Three days. So people like Elon Musk, these high performers, they're in constant flow, which means they're dumping their allostatic load. All the junk in your brain, the cortisol, is getting flushed out on a regular basis so you don't get depression, you don't get anxiety. So we teach you at the Flow Research Collective as part of like over 10,000 research papers written on this mm -hmm. from Harvard, from you know, all, all over the world, to actually be able to, as a corporate athlete yeah. to drop into flow and do flow cycles throughout the day. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, my favorite slide shows a baseline for a person. Baseline, ready everybody? Checks their emails 36 times an hour. That's a flow blocker. Oh. The, the phone is a, is a blocking machine. It's a dopamine hit after dopamine hit after dopamine hit. Just the thought of it vibrating mm -hmm. gives you a dopamine hit. Mm. So we call it flow before phone. You get rid of the phone in the morning. You literally have flow blocks of you know one to th one to three hours, but then you you rest. So y y it, the cycle for flow is struggle release flow recovery. Struggle release flow recovery. Why I love it the most is that it makes you look at struggle so differently in your life. You'll never look at struggle the same way again. Most people spend their whole life dipping their toes in out of struggle. They never persist through to flow. So they're just, they're just miserable. They're, they have anxiety. They're frustrated. You can, you can actually trick yourself in the release. Typical release would be when your head hits the pillow and all these ideas flow into your head. Mm. But you can do that throughout the day. So you, you're like, I need to do 232 emails. That's overwhelming struggle. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a cup of coffee. Release. You come back and say, I can do this in 23 minutes. Set a clear goal. You have a flow trigger, press a button, it goes dong. You know, music starts, brrr, do it in 23 minutes. You do more work in 23 minutes than most people do in four hours. Wow. So uh, so in underflow, instead of, ready, 2.3 hours of work, the average person actually gets done in a single day, 2.3 hours of work out of eight. You get six plus hours. When I speak to companies, I always go, you think I'm here for the company? This is all about you. Yeah. You have more time for fun, more time yeah. for freedom. Work hard, play hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like get own your life back again. When did when did this? Um, is this a subject matter they came to you to present, or something that you dove into as you started learning about it and said, "I got to start speaking." Yeah. So this. Stephen Kotler, who wrote "The Rise of Superman: The Art of Impossible," world's leading expert on on peak performance, mm -hmm. neuroscientist. Stephen Kotler is um, runs the Flow Research Collective. It was started with a friend of mine, Otto Kumbar, who's just one of the most brilliant business minds I've ever met. So Otto got me into flow and, and really, and he used it on a regular basis and taught me about it. But, but let's go back for a second because this mm. is neat. Stephen Kotler was a young journalist in the 1980s covering the X Games. What he became fascinated with was at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday, no human being on the planet had ever done, let's just say, a, back, a double backflip out of a half pipe on a snowboard. Yeah. At 11 o'clock, one kid would do it by 2 o'clock, six more did it. Yeah. How does that happen? They said it was impossible. 1954, Roger Bannister runs a four-minute mile. No human being on the planet runs a four-minute mile. Within one year, dozens of people do it. Now hundreds have done it. Yeah. It's expanding the mind 4% outside of your comfort zone. Wow. If you do that on a regular basis, you put yourself in a struggle position. You release, you flow, you recover. Wow. It's the same system. And it's not an on-off switch. The key to all of this is looking at like a dimmer switch identifying where you are in the cycle, being able to drop it at any time. There's power in this. There's science behind it. Mm -hmm. It's over half a century of science behind it. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi actually coined the term in the 60s. Stephen Kotler took it to a whole different level. And now you have some of the top neuroscientists in the world talking about it. Companies like Deloitte. I, I speak for, you know, Flow Research Collective, Deloitte, Google, Accenture, Navy SEALs, mm -hmm. all looking at the science behind it saying, how do we get into flow? How do we become more efficient and more effective to get our lives back? Get you some of that. It's exciting. I'm telling I'll you. I'll just get uh, you some of that. Yeah, I'm like, I uh, mean, you're, 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 you're I'm boom. trying to think you're, of another question. Yeah, you're, you've been <laughs> shut <laughs> down. <laughs> you're in the flow. No, no but, it, you know, it, it, it is mm -hmm. fun because isn't our goal, like for yeah. me, okay, mm -hmm. I want to have fun in life. Yes. Mm -hmm. We don't get this back. So then how do you do what you need to do to be successful, but then have the time to go have fun, to be yeah. present with your family, to be yeah. present with fun, right. to go get life experiences. Yes. And, and, and that, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. 
I, I really believe that. We want experiences, and we, all, we can't get that like sitting behind the desk all day long, so then you have to be more efficient, more effective with your own time to get your own life back. If you're not making memories, you're wasting people's time. If you're not making memories, you're wasting people's yeah. time. If you're not giving people 100% presence, well, you're selling them short. Mm -hmm. Don't sing it, bring it. That's why I sit across people on the table. I just like lock and load. Let's go. Have fun. Let's dance. And, and you know, the neat thing about you, Tom, is you, you practice what you preach, right? Absolutely. I mean, so this is, this is the coolest part of who you are, right? Is that, you, again, you're building leaders. Yep. You're investing in people. Yep. And you are present. You're, yep. you're all in with people yeah. and that matters. And Absolutely. you don't get that these days because half the time people are checking their cell phones mm -hmm. half the time. And, and by the way, we're living in this, in this, this society that we're, you know, procrastination is rampant. You know, it, we, ex people are overwhelmed and burnout is a huge problem. People are burned out. Yeah. And so again, it's tackling those problems yeah. with a scientific solution. Yeah. And, and so when I speak these days, I, I match the science that the flow with the, so it's IQ meets EQ oh. to create like a super you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what it, that <laughs> he might you might have another phrase. Uh, all here. I can yeah, tell yeah. you is that you know this guy this guy's pure fuel. This is no, nitrous oxide stuff. It it is so much fun, and that's why you know it's 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 fun having the title company. It's fun having that team there because I know it's just title, okay? But we view it so differently, right? It's 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 about helping people achieve the American dream. It's about making sure that people, whether you're a realtor, that we're getting this thing closed. Like, there are some companies out there, like you know, unless we get the documents 24 hours in advance, we can't close. We're like, we close if we get the documents four minutes after the scheduled closing time. Like, yeah. nobody gets paid until. The, and by the way, we want the clients to be happy, mm -hmm. and we want them to have a great experience. Is why we 100%. bake fresh cookies and make them <laughs> gourmet coffees, and you know all that stuff. I had this one woman at a closing. She goes, "This is what I need. I need to be pampered." <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. I know we're at a closing, but that's the feeling that I want to create. And, yeah. and when we can do that, then we're successful. First class. I, I want to I want to just step give us I mean, really put the rubber to the road in this in the in the, the flow, this yes. flow process. How you know, I don't know, you could pick any uh, career person out there. How your people in your title office that might be back in the cubicle doing yeah, yeah. the com computer work, doing the searching the title yeah. and all that stuff. W what what is what are some little things that they can do to get in this? Okay, so let let me. I'm going to give two examples. So okay. so if you don't mind, I'm gonna, I'm going to give one uh, example for my daughter for a second, if that's all right. Because yeah, I know yeah. we're not supposed to talk about our families all the time, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say so. Corinne won the Hermosa Open this year, which is like the Wimbledon of her sport for two and two women's beach volleyball. It's on the Pro Tour, mm -hmm. and she had a, she was on a podcast recently, and I just listened to the podcast. And I want you to hear, hear this out for a second. So the guy goes, Corinne, take, take us back to the week of Hermosa. That was probably the biggest win of your career. Like, what was that week like? She goes, we had two of the worst practices we've ever had that week. Struggle. She goes, we took the day off before the, the tournament. We never do that. Release. She was in the zone. When I say in, like she was in flow, I saw her when she won the semifinals and she was walking to the stadium. You know, there's thousands of people around and she's like walking toward the stadium and I go, I love you. And she goes, let's finish this. And she just kept <laughs> walking. She didn't even, she didn't even look at me. Like she was just focused. She, she was right. in, so s flow, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She goes, I slept the whole next day after the three day tournament yeah. recovery. Yeah. So from a corporate, uh, for, let's, how do we do that in work? Well, it's oscillation. So we call it flow before phone. So you wake up, the alpha, the, are you ready for this? The alpha beta wavelengths yeah. are similar to the alpha theta wavelengths of flow, from sleeping to flow. So we even say, like, if you're working from home, within 90 seconds, roll out of bed and start working. Have everything prepared the night before. Maybe even untangle the first part of the first oh, yeah. task oh, yeah. so that you can fl right, w yeah. drop right into it. Yeah. Schedule your your one hour, two, two hour, three hour flow block. Have the phone on silent. Stay focused on the task. Uh -huh. Now, when you're done with that, guess what you get to do? Then do your morning routine. Go running or do something fun. Like take care of yourself. The problem is, you, I, we call it the biohacker versus the billionaire. You're either like over hacking your life. You're running, juicing, do all this, stuff, but half the day is gone by the time you get finished. Yep, yep. Or you're a billionaire, burned out not taking time for anybody, yeah. probably divorced, you know, bad relationships and, and, and guzzling caffeine all day. But there's an in-between and this is what it is. It's, it's oscillation. So you, you, you get everything ready, you flow, you come out of that, right? You, you, you take a, a, you know, a rest recovery, have an afternoon flow, 
recovery, you'll have six plus hours of hardcore work and time versus 2.3 hours of the average person according mm. to Harvard studies. Mm-hmm. 300% wow. more. This reminds me, um, when I, I, t- I tell people when I was in college, I had to learn how to learn. Mm. I didn't have to work very hard in high school. Go to college. I'm at the bottom. Most people probably would have failed, would have been failed out. My mom gives me these tapes called Where There's a Will, There's an A. And one of the things it talks about is studying. And the only thing to do between studying and taking the test is sleep. Yeah. And don't, don't bring the book to class and, and start looking at the book right before you're about to take the test. Study. Take that rest. And then, when you, like you're saying, go to work. Go right to work. That's what the, you should do is go right to the classroom and take the test. Yeah. I mean, I, w- I know that I got to a point after doing that for two and a half, ye- my last two and a half years, when you're asleep, the history of the world is going through you if you're studying yeah, history. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all these things are flashing. You're like having all these, uh, not necessarily nightmares, but all these dreams about all the different things that you, you just studied. Yeah. And then, like so you see so many kids, like, take their study. They're trying to read, a, read something right before they're about to take the test. You're wasting your time. Yeah. Do the you know the part and then like say sleep and walk right into the office. Yeah, interesting and go right there. Well, so so there's a term we use called live like a lion. Mm. So a lion is either hunting or sleeping. Yeah. There's no in between. They're not going to exert energy on things that don't matter. Mm. Right. So it's they're, they're hunting or they're sleeping. So it's the same thing. Like you know you're either you're either working or you're playing or you're or, or you should be resting. And here's the difference too. This is where most Americans fail. Because they don't recover. Most executives fail to recover. Mm. They just work Mm -hmm. and work and work. They don't have their full recovery. But the recovery becomes so important. It's not just recovery. It's not not passive recovery, Netflix and chill. That doesn't release your allostatic load. It's it's literally, you know, go for a a little walk, massage, cold therapy, heat Mm. therapy. Right. Like, active recovery where you you know you your body feels good and you're able to like move on because the problem is you cannot drop back into flow without act you know real recovery and that means sleep and sleep is a huge part of it you have to your brain has to shut off a lot of the yes. outside distractions like you're saying watching that watching a movie on netflix you hit still yes you want to yeah so one of my favorite videos you guys so there's a video on youtube of a guy going through new york and he's got a video, and he's in the back of a taxi cab, and he's got the camera out. It's real. I mean, this is a real video, and he's showing the, fa- you know, going to show the family the, his Times Square and everything. All of a sudden, you see this car going back and forth aggressively, and it cuts off the ca- taxi driver. New York, stocky New Yorker gets out, and he's like, you know, you cut me off, and this Jamaican cab driver gets out. He's like six six, <laughs> and the guy could just destroy this New Yorker, but he's like, oh, I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry. Like, please accept my apology. I didn't even see you. The, the New Yorker didn't even know what to do with that energy, right? Because <laughs> so he, you know, he says that's what I thought, and goes and gets back in his car essentially. And the guy gets back in the car, and the the guy still taping says, "How did you do that? How did you not destroy that guy?" And you know what the guy said? He goes, "Listen, man. All day long we take on trash." trash 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 he goes that guy he was just emptying his trash guess what man not my trash <laughs> get you some of that I like that how but but that's like yeah. the allostatic load like you have to get rid of that you have to dump it every once in a while but you can biohack your brain to thinking the release these mini releases are getting rid of it and you 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 know put back in the flow state, which is all these great chemicals. So you feel better. You're more productive. You're hyper-focused on what mm. matters in your life. And that's where this makes such a big difference. I, I just encourage you to go f- to go to Flow Research Collective. Look it up on, on YouTube. There's just so many. You spell that out. Spell that out. Flow for Research. F-L-O-W. F-L-O-W. Research mm-hmm. Collective. Research Collective. Yeah. Okay. And um, FRC. And, and I'm going to put that in the, in the shit when I put it up on the. Facebook and stuff going there. And Absolutely, yeah. Flow Research Collective. Yeah, yeah, and you can look up some of the videos on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, it's really cutting-edge stuff, and it's really powerful, and it actually makes an impact, and there's science behind it. That's the best part. Yeah, yeah. Can, can, can you believe this guy's such a rock star? I mean, he's getting better every day, just making it happen. All I do is just witness and respect and just, wow. It's impressive, Danny. Well, coming from you, I, I really appreciate that because I I, th- I feel like you're doing the same thing on a regular basis. And uh, both of you with this, I mean, you know, this this is what it's about. There's a great book out there called uh, The Challenger Sale. Yeah, It's one of my favorite sales books of all time because really what it says is relationships come and go, and we understand that. We, we need relationships. 
but you almost challenge people not to use you mm. because you're a thought leader in the industry or you have the best technology. Mm. And I've always thought that, that with my business, like we need to be uh, cutting edge, like have the best information, yeah. be able to accurately yeah. uh, s- protect people and support people yeah. uh, with, because then, you know, you have a chance to move forward. You know, you can't be complacent. Mm-hmm. You've got to always be looking for new opportunities to, to be the next best version of your company, next best version of you as a leader, you know, and, and how are you leading at home? How are you yeah. leading in the community? How are you leading with your business? Wow. Again, people, process, technology, in that order, tied into that, you're I'm, going to the stratosphere. We're gonna, I'm going to program this. With yeah. This, this <laughs> <phrases. laughs> Dan. Number one, number two, <laughs> number three. Yes. Hey, listen, it's consistent. Yes. yes. I, 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 I medicate myself all the time. <laughs> I have Tommy time in the morning from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock. I have my structure, but I'm always working on trying to optimize refine, and there's one thing I really like to do, and I love witnessing other people's success. It just yeah, feeds sure. my soul. That zen of the business that you yeah. get from seeing others succeed, it just is nitrous oxide. It makes me explosive. Do you know, I talk about John Wooden in my speeches, and John Wooden was, you know, great. I went to UCLA, so, you mm-hmm. know, I'm biased, you know, coached at the greatest university in the country. And, and uh, so anyway, long story short, he invested in people, right? He was building leaders. And I have a term for this. I mm-hmm. call it success to significance. Mm. Like when you finally realize the full impact you have over other people's lives. Good, good, bad, bad, right? Mm. So, you know, I I just challenge all your listeners to be that positive influence, right? To to be significant in people's lives and Mm. and and to look at it from the perspective of of karma. You know, you you do the right thing, great things start to happen. Get you some. And close with that. I I I'm gonna tell you that's the explanation point. This has been an awesome, awesome interview. Spending time on the Mortgage Athlete Podcast with you, Danny, is incredible. Mm -hmm. You've changed and helped and empowered so many people's lives, not only in the 904, but globally. Uh, I I just am so, so honored and proud uh, to be in your uh, vapor trail. It's incredible. Thank you very much. 